In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heirs after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, 
according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we approach Christmas, the Church places in our hearts and minds the event of the Annunciation, which we see in today's Gospel. We witness there the divine initiative of God, in which He takes flesh from the Virgin for our salvation. We also witness the human response and cooperation, whereby Mary Mary freely accepts the grace and vocation offered to her. He chooses to become man, desiring to do this with the full cooperation and consent of Mary. Mary could have declined God's invitation. She was free to have said no, but she freely chose to cooperate with God's saving plan. So we honor her not only because God chose her, but also because she cooperated with God's loving design and desired to accomplish his will in all things. Today, I'd like to focus our attention on the archangel's greeting, the first words of the Hail Mary. In the Latin translation, the angel says, Ave Maria, Hail Mary. But the Greek word, kaire, means rejoice. Rejoice, Mary. So the angel actually says to her, rejoice, Mary. Christian faith is essentially joy, the only joy that saves. The angel's greeting in Greek is surprising because among Jews, 
the traditional greeting is shalom, or peace, in Hebrew. Here, however, in the Gospel, we see the angel use an expression common to Greeks. This is significant because early Greek converts to Christianity would see in the first pages of the Gospel that God was opening up a way, a new road for the Gentiles, all the non-Jewish peoples of the world. All of us are invited to participate in God's plan of salvation. Jesus is not only the Messiah of Israel, but the Savior of all nations, of people of every tribe and tongue. Our God is not a distant, disinterested, unmoved mover of the philosophers. Rather, God has a face and a name and is close to us, completely and personally invested in each one of us so close to us that he has taken on human flesh and become man. The Eastern Catholic Church in the Byzantine Rite expresses this joy in one of the hymns that reflects on the Annunciation. The people sing to Mary, Rejoice, initiate of God's ineffable will. Rejoice, assurance of those who pray in silence. Rejoice, beginning of Christ's miracles. Rejoice, crown of his dogmas. Rejoice, heavenly ladder by which God came down. Rejoice, bridge that carries us from earth to heaven. Rejoice, wonder of angels sounded abroad. Rejoice, wound of demons bewailed afar. Rejoice, unwedded bride. Christianity proclaims joy that saves to know and understand the depths of God's tender compassion, the power of his mercy, is the good news. It is the gospel. It's why we gather Sunday after Sunday here around the altar. We know that life in this world is a valley of tears. We experience mourning here, weeping, sadness, sorrow. There are many types of suffering and affliction that mark each of our lives. So much pain and suffering and sorrow in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And yet, as Christians, we are joyful, full of gratitude and hope. Christmas reminds us of why we are joyful. We are joyful because despite all of our sadness and pain, despite the heavy burden of our sins, God loves us, and in this love there is peace, the opportunity for forgiveness, and the wellspring of healing and mercy. In today's world, God often can appear to be absent and far from us. Wickedness in many respects has seemed to multiply. People often turn to drugs or other forms of addiction to numb the pain. We turn to God not to numb the pain, but to transform it, allowing it to become a vehicle of God's saving grace, a channel of mercy for ourselves and for other people. In our pain and sorrow, let us never forget the words of the angel to Mary. Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Truly the Lord is with each of us and will never abandon us. Our joy is meant to be shared and communicated with everyone. Yes, this includes even the sometimes toxic, dysfunctional families and workplaces in which we find ourselves in our lives. God is there too, amidst all the dysfunction and the chaos. We must bring joy where there is no joy. We Catholics are ambassadors of joy, missionaries of good cheer. As Pope Benedict XVI once said, this is the real commitment of Advent, to bring joy to other people. Joy is the true gift of Christmas, not expensive presents that demand time and money. Comedians often poke fun at Catholics for promoting guilt trips, repression, shame, and a pessimistic worldview. And St. Teresa of Avila tells us that a sad Christian is a sad Christian indeed. We will attract others to the Catholic faith 
to the extent that we proclaim the joy of knowing and loving Christ by our actions. So let us give joy in simple, ordinary ways all the time. Show people that being a faithful Catholic is a joyful, happy, liberating, exciting, worthwhile thing to be. A thank you card, a smile, the offering of a mass for the repose of the soul of someone who has died. These are all important ways of showing our love. The other day I was at the dentist and I saw a sign there that read, a smile is the prettiest thing you can wear. So true, our smiles proclaim Christ. Even washing the dishes can be a way of showing love for God and for our family. In the Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul records a few words from Jesus that do not appear in the Gospels. There, St. Paul tells us that Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In this giving, we discover that in giving joy, we receive joy. We who have the joy of knowing Christ and his mercy radiate this joy to everyone. As we approach Christmas, let us rejoice and wear smiles for the sake of Christ. The Lord is with us and close to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy upon thy people who cry to thee. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. Jesus. 